Hello and welcome to this webinar on feeling confident as a coach and charging your worth. I'm Grace Kelly, founder of citygirlconfidence.com and I'm a former French teacher who left her city job and swapped her career as a teacher to become a full-time coach. And I'd love to share with you on today's webinar uh, more about how you can become a confident coach, how you can feel confident as a coach. It's one of the key areas that many of my own clients come to me um, struggling with, you know, that sense of wanting to appear to be the expert, that sense of worrying about being seen as um, a fraud, concerned about people finding out whether or not they're um, really good enough for what they're wanting to charge. And so on today's webinar, I'm hoping that you will be inspired and will feel more confident and more at ease with um, showing up for people. In my experience, coaching is very much about showing up and responding to what shows up. And it's more about being of service to the other person than it is about getting lost in your own insecure thinking around whether or not you're good enough, expert enough, or able to charge a certain price. So um, you're in the right place today. If you've been uh, wanting to get a coaching business off the ground, if you've been desiring to work with high paying clients, um, and maybe you've been undercharging for a long time, or maybe you've just not even received your first client as of yet. Um, you're also in the right place if you have any sort of squeamishness or concerns around being the expert or have any sort of worries about whether or not you really can coach or whether or not you're good enough in the area of, of helping someone else. And you're also in the right place today if if you question the value of what you're doing, if you have any sort of insecurities or doubts about um, why people would pay you and, and what the value is. And so in order to set the table here, I'd like to share a little bit of my own journey with regards to um, you know, becoming a confident coach, be, you know, getting out of my own way and, and you know, getting beyond the insecurities that, um, that I personally had at the beginning when I was starting out. Um, you know, to, to set it in context, I'm, I'm three years into my coaching business and, uh, you know, I started uh, really on the journey of, of coaching back in, um, in, in 2013. And when I look back on that period of time, you know, I'd been a French teacher. I had no idea what else I could do with my skill set. I, I thought I was limited to translation and communication and linguistics only. Um, and, and so within me, though, there was a deep desire to help people. There was that foundational sense of, yes, I would like to be doing something different with my life. I would like to be helping others. I would love to be supporting others in, in, in being okay, in, in being able to navigate life's challenges. And so for me, when I was, when I was starting out, I, you know, I didn't have everything in place. I didn't have what the experts tell you you need to have, like the perfect web and the absolute ideal client avatar and, um, you know, the, the clarity of your message and, and any of those useful and helpful things that probably could speed up, could have, you know, been speeding up the process for me. But what I did have was I had the desire to be of service and I didn't have a lot of thinking about receiving money for that. I didn't have a lot of um, insecurity about whether or not I could, you know, do this type of work. Um, now, that's not to say it hasn't, you know, shown up at times. It certainly has. Um, but, but it wasn't it wasn't predominantly running the show. So my insecure thinking about myself and whether or not I could succeed as a coach 
wasn't as predominant as as, as I see it being for some of the clients I work with. And, you know, that can be an obstacle in itself. In fact, a huge one. You know, many of the, the women that I'm working with are simply so lost in the thought storm of whether or not they, they've got what it takes, whether or not they have anything of value, whether or not they need to work more on their money story before they charge a certain amount. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's, it's a, it's common. It's a common kind of problem for, for any coach to be stuck in her head about whether or not she's worth it or good enough or can, you know, has what it takes. But I suppose what I would want you to notice is that you don't have to take those thoughts about yourself too seriously. That you don't have to give those thoughts about yourself any relevance at all. And so, for me, when I was starting out, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't give a lot of relevance to any thinking about whether or not I could do it, whether or not I, it was worth it. And I think as a result of that, it's why I very naturally and easily charged 5,000 pounds for a one day intensive VIP day to my very first client. And I didn't have a lot of concern about what other people were charging or whether or not I was on the right path. I simply followed my instincts, followed the wisdom within me each step of the way um, in relation to, to being able to serve this one particular woman right at the very beginning of my coaching career. And so, You know my my and you know my business has you know my business has generated beyond that you know that was where where I started and and beyond that then I began to take on more clients I began to get known for what I was doing in terms of helping people transition from their their day jobs and then helping women set up their own coaching practice and, and helping people get clear on their message and you know their what they're here to do and what they want to share with the world. And as a result of that, I've been able to, you know, consistently have a stream of clients for the last three years. And on top of that, get to travel the world and meet clients in places like you know, Australia, America, Italy, England, Ireland, you know, um, all around and, and also be able to, to host clients on, on, on international retreats and bring groups together and, you know, have live events in big cities. So all that to say, you know, it wasn't like I had all the expertise and had absolute clarity on what I was doing and like everything was laid out and in place. It was just that desire to be of service combined with not getting in my own way and then starting to share my message regularly, starting to share the message consistently, and as and when needed, bringing in the marketing elements with that, that could help my ideal client see me and reach me and, uh, and reach out to me. So becoming a confident coach, well, Let's explore where confidence really comes from because I think that many people starting out get lost in the idea that there's a right way to do this, that there's a right way to run a coaching business, that there's a right way to, to be with a client. And so when you're lost in that idea, it can be very difficult to be present with another human being because then you're lost in your own head about when you're with someone and you're lost in your own thoughts about whether or not you're doing it right, whether or not, you know, they're receiving the benefit. 
so I find that confidence is what we're born with. You know, we look at little babies. They have no problem screaming for what they need. They have no problem, you know, um, waking up in the morning and confidently, you know, um, enjoying their day. And even children, you know, up to a certain age, children are really confident. If you ask them, can they do something? They'll tell you straight away. Yeah, of course I can do that. You know, I'll, I'll do that. No problem. Uh, one example is, you know, when um, a friend of mine was describing the story of, um, you know, their niece coming to, to stay with them for the weekend. And um, she was basically cutting her, hus her husband's hair. And she said to her niece, uh, you know, you know, what are you doing? What, what, what's happening? And her niece said, well, I'm, I'm just playing, but you know, um, I, I reckon I could give uncle Sam a, um, a haircut too. Do you want me to help you? And my friend was basically mesmerized at the fact that, you know, this, this child was, showing up confidently, I don't know, five or six years old and saying, yeah, I can cut, I can cut my uncle's hair too if you want me to, you know? So we have this innate confidence and it's, it's who we are. It's who we naturally are when we're not completely lost in our thinking about ourselves. At some point on our journey, we become self-conscious we almost disconnect, if you like, from that um, innate confidence within. And we start to get a self-awareness that for some can really take over. I know in my own journey, in my own experience, it was a huge insight and revelation to me when I walked into a room full of people um, and, and felt a terrible unease, a terrible kind of tightness in my chest and, and, a, and a sort of difficulty with relaxing. And I remember saying to uh, a friend of mine, you know, I just can't connect with this group. I don't know like what's going on today or, or what it is, but I just feel really uptight and, and uncomfortable. And it occurred to me in that conversation that I was really focused on myself. I was really focused in that room on how I looked, on whether or not my answers were correct, on how I was measuring up against everybody else in the room who were all these successful people. And this, this self-consciousness was literally blocking me from connecting to anyone in the room, as well as being able to connect to the part of me that is confident, that always knows the right way to do things, that naturally can serve and help people. And so when I really saw that my, that my self-consciousness, my, my insecure thinking about myself was, was literally having me hold myself and, and, and be uneasy in a group of people, you know, something clicked within me, something started to release and relax uh, because I started to notice that my experience of, you know, myself and others was coming from my thinking about myself and others. You know, I started to see that this self-consciousness uh, was nothing more but, but you know, a, a, a thought storm about myself but it really was in the way of me being able to, to be at ease in my body and to, to connect with other people. And so when we're not lost in that, that, that self-consciousness, that, that thinking about self, that insecure thinking about self, we very naturally access our, our, innate, our innate confidence, which is always there. The part of us that knows what to say, the part of us that knows what to do, uh, the part of us that even under the greatest strain and pressure and difficult circumstances um, comes up with the direction. So becoming a confident coach 
is nothing more than getting out of your own way with regards to your thinking about yourself. It's nothing more than not taking your self-consciousness so seriously. And it's remembering that it's who you are. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's within you when you're not lost in personal thought. Now, for many of us, of course, we're in the human condition. So getting lost in this self-conscious uh, feeling and getting lost in this personal thought about ourselves and what others think of us or what people might say about us and what our clients might you know say about us is is key it's it's a key foundation to to move beyond that um, that those hurricanes that that we've been living with and when you do move beyond that like for myself when i saw that what was really going on was that i was really having a lot of self-conscious insecure thinking about myself when we start to see it for what it is just thought nothing more and when we start to recognize that we don't have to be afraid of our thinking that we don't have to take our thinking about ourselves so seriously we can then show up and be very present with our clients we can show up and be of service to people in a way that is powerful in a way that is dynamic and insightful and wisdom filled for them and, you know, having been through coaching accreditations and having, you know, uh, the, the coaching certific certifications and things, I can tell you from my own experience, nothing, no piece of paper, no, no tick the boxing, here's how you coach, can, can replace being absolutely present with another human where you're not having a lot of thinking about yourself going on and you're actually able to support them in reaching their objectives. So for those of you that are concerned about being the expert, you're concerned about whether or not you, you have the right credentials, whether or not you can really do it, I guess what I'm saying here is, if you can show up and be present, and if you can get out of your own way where you're thinking about yourself and your ability to perform are concerned, then you're doing and going to do the absolute best you possibly can with the person in front of you. You know, even that thought in itself, am I expert enough? Can I really do this? Do I have what it takes? What if they don't get the value? Just notice where that's coming from. Again, we're back into insecure thinking about ourselves we're back into the focus being on self instead of service and serving the person in front of you. So it's not to say that credentials and certifications and accreditations aren't useful, they absolutely are. But it is to say that, you know, your confidence is not coming from that piece of paper, right? Go and do those things because you'd love to like I did, go and do those things because you want the joy and experience of doing it. And because it may be useful, certainly, for some of you who are going to, into coaching with, with companies and things like that, people may ask you for that. But remember that people are interested in how good they're going to feel and be after they're done working with you. They're not interested so much in you per se, although, you know, you're your experience, your credentials, and your um, reputation, of course, can, can, can be important and can, and can be useful for people. But the confidence that you're searching for is within you and is ever present when you're not getting in your own way. A word kind of about charging and value. You know, I see this as an area that many of my prospects and clients come to me with, you know, well, what should I charge? You know, you charged 
such a huge amount with your first client, you were just starting out, how can I do that, you know? And a lot of them come to me really believing that they have some sort of money story that they need to work on or figure out or fix so that they can charge more. Well, see, again, even those thoughts are very self-centered. You know, with all respect, there, you know, any sort of thinking about can I charge, should I charge, what should I charge, you know, who am I to charge, we're back into the self, we're back into the head, we're back into the storm, as opposed to letting our own wisdom guide us as to what would be the, 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 the number or the 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 price for starting out, you know? Like I said, when I was starting, I didn't have a lot of thinking about the number. I didn't have a lot of thinking about whether or not, you know, um, I was worth it per se, you know? Um, that's not to say that it hasn't changed over time, but but I I would share with you that, you know, You, you know what to charge and if you can settle down enough, if you can reduce the idea that this is about you and that, you know, and that, that, that the money is a story, then you'll very easily start to, to, to get a gauge for what you can charge the, the person on the phone with you. You know, some people play on the safe side, and I know with some of my clients, sometimes I'll just say if they're really in a sin about it, I'll just say, look at, char you know, charge a number or say a number that you have absolutely no qualms about, that you have no thinking about, that you're just like, it's a done deal. And for some people, that's useful because sometimes they're, you know, squeamish at a thousand or 2,000, but they're really like, yeah, no big deal at 500. So sometimes it can be useful to consider that option. But what I would say is, uh, you know, much like it was for me, within you, there's a number that's swimming around, generally, that you would love to start, you know, um, using and bringing into your life. And it's, it's not going to look like everybody else's. It's not going to be... Um, let's say, the equivalent of what your colleagues are charging. It's not going to be the logical way to do things. But what I will want you to take heart on is that whatever your number is, you know, um, it's yours. Begin to use it. And there is absolutely no shame in starting out at whatever number you choose to, whether it's 100 or it's 50 or it's 5,000, or it's, you know, anywhere in between. People are paying you for an improvement in their life. And whether you're working with them on business, or career, or health, or diet, or, or body, or... Um, or anything really, you know, they're look, the ultimate thing they're looking for, the greatest value that they are reaching for, consciously or unconsciously, is, is, an, is an improvement in their well-being. Now that might be financial well-being, it might be mental well-being, it might be physical well-being. What I have found is, regardless of what it is, when they, when they start to feel that innate well-being come to life, when they start to feel that peace of mind, when they start to see that they can navigate the challenges without freaking out, you know, there, there's, um, there's a great value to that. So regardless of whether you're worried about them getting results or you're worried about them, you know, getting their money's worth or them getting um, what they signed up for. 
you know, again, don't get too involved and make it up, up, you know, with yourself about this, you know, absolutely keep it clear as to what your objectives are together. Absolutely make it, you know, make sure that you're on track with that and, and, and keep checking in with her and keep helping her, him or her towards that. But by no means consider that the value is, lim is, is simply limited or simply about the tangible result. You know, um, of course, what they're wanting to achieve with you, they're going to want to achieve something tangible, be it 10 pounds lighter or 100K richer or, you know, um, whatever it is. But, but ultimately, if you really look at why people want what they say they want, underneath it there is a desire for an improvement in in their well-being around that area and so as a coach you can be confident that the 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 work you do with your client is always going to be on the upward spiral towards greater well-being if she or he is just sitting on their couch thinking about this area and having absolutely no support in this area, but hoping that a transformation will occur, well, how likely is that? It would kind of like be saying, well, I'm hoping to lose 10 pounds, but I'm not like, hopefully it will just fall off whilst I sit on the couch and continue to, you know, intellectualize my situation and you reach into the bag of crisps and, you know, veg out in front of the TV. Like, she and he is way closer to getting 10 pounds off every time he or she shows up at the gym um, or has a call with, um, you know, in this case, her coach to, to set, to, to ensure that her eating habits are, are on track and, and, and she's seeing something new about her body or herself. So even if you were just to show up, you know, is what one of my mentors once put it to me, you know, even talking to a lamppost can be useful for people, Grace, you know? So even if, if there were just, to sh just for you to show up, that would be of value because they would hear something or see something or feel something completely different to what they would if they were just to continue sitting on the couch intellectualizing their situation and hoping that something was going to change. So I think that we can get lost in this whole thing about, you know, why would they pay me? Why would they, um, why would they wanna like, work with me or why what's the value and again just notice that you know you're starting to make that about yourself you know people will pay not so much you they're paying for the transformation that they're wanting and you are the vessel and the vehicle through which they are way more likely to get the transformation than they would if they continue you know, in the situation they're in without any support, without taking any action, without having any guidance. And, you know, your role, as it were, is to share what you know to be helpful about what they're going through. You know, a lot of the coaches that I work with, they're so worried about getting the answer wrong. They're so worried about not being able to give the right advice. and. And, and oftentimes, the most powerful thing that you can, sh you know, the most powerful way that you can help someone is to share with them what you know to be true about the situation that they're going through. Because the likelihood is you'll have been through it yourself. You rarely get a client that, 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 isn't going through something that you haven't already experienced. But just sharing with them, you know, what you know to be true and what you know to be helpful about the situation. 
That's the most powerful thing that you can do as a coach. Um, you know, I was speaking to one of my clients yesterday, and, and she, can't, you know, she said, "Grace, you know, I'm I'm so happy." I said, "Oh, well, okay. Tell me why. What's tell me what's happened, Lorraine? You know?" And she said, "Well, you know, that coaching session we had where you told me to, you know, basically just enjoy myself and stop thinking that I should be doing something else right now. Well, I did what you told me to do." And two days later, I got a, a person wanting to speak with me about my services. And a day later, I sold a $5,000 package. Now, for those of you listening, and certainly in my head, I was thinking, oh, God, that's what I told her to do. That, that was probably really could have been considered totally crap advice, you know. But the reality is I was showing up for her and I was responding to what was showing up. And during the course of our coaching call, I happened to say to her, you got too much on this. I think, you know, go enjoy yourself and do what you're saying you want to do. And as a result of that, you know, she had this $5,000 client show up two days later and she sold that, that high-end package. So it's not rocket science. It's often... What are you hearing that's coming through when you're not lost in your personal thought? And what have you seen to be helpful? What have you seen to be true that can really benefit the person who's in the situation they're currently in? And so that's where your value resides, you know? showing up to them, being able to move them forward, being able to say to them what you know to be true and what has helped you in, that, in, in any of those scenarios. They're paying you for the, their, the transformation that they want to receive. And the more you can get out of your own way and think that this is about you and you getting them there, the more they're going to reach their objectives easily because your, your coaching is going to be powerful, whatever comes through. That's not to say that you, you know, you completely backed off and you've no interest and you're passive about your clients, but it's just, you know, that, that's not the case. It's to say that, you know, you are remembering your function and your role as the coach when you're with them. You know, it's not to mummy them, it's not to be completely codependent with them, and it's not to rush them to get somewhere. You know, it's, it's really to powerfully guide and really naturally share what it is that's going to help them get there. And that's, you know, that is the role of the transformative conversation. Now, of course, depending on who you're working with and, and, and the type of things people are wanting from you, you know, it might be necessary that you use particular coaching styles, that you use particular technique, perhaps. But what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about those of you that are new coaches that are questioning your expertise, that are questioning your ability to charge, that are questioning the value, that are questioning whether or not you can do this. Well, be gentle. You're starting out and it's easier than you, than, than you might think. And it's okay to show up and be fully present. In fact, it's the most powerful thing you can do in relation to actually serving the person in front of you. So any feeling like a fraud, any feeling like you're not good enough, any feeling like you've got more work to do on yourself and your money story, well, no. Notice where that's coming from. Remember that's an insecure thought storm. 
And by all means, if you want to spend more time fixing yourself, you can go ahead and do that. I personally feel that you know, the more my clients can get into service with other clients, the more that I can be in service with other clients, the, you know, the less I'm in my head about myself, the less they're in their head about themselves, and the more they're actually out there serving the people who need them, charging what they're desiring, charging what they're worth, as they say, and just simply showing up and responding to the people that show up within that. So I hope that this has been useful and I'd love to take this opportunity that to, to share with you, you know, if, if you've heard something on today's webinar that resonates with you, that you'd like to explore further with me, or if you'd simply just like some personalized support, um, then, you know, I'm going to invite you to a complimentary uh, discovery session with me which you can apply for over on citygirlconfidence.com forward slash sales, S-A-L-E-S, forward slash discovery. And you can fill in the application form there. Um, I will provide you with the support you need at this particular time on, on a specific area that you find yourself struggling with. Um, I'm really happy to do that. and to be able to um, give you up to an hour of my time at this particular uh, moment. And certainly, um, if you would like to uh, address anything around, you know, your message, your programs, your confidence, um, what to charge, you know, maybe even how to become a coach. Maybe you're in a job right now and you haven't even considered coaching, but you know you want to help people. Or maybe um, there's some other area that you'd love my personal attention on, then I'm delighted to offer you this complimentary one-to-one -one discovery session. Um, again, you can reach me on citygirlconfidence.com forward slash sales forward slash discovery. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.